Greetings everyone and welcome back to another in-depth phone review. In today's one, I'm going to be taking a look at the newest flagship phone from OnePlus, which is the OnePlus 11. The OnePlus 11 was released in January this year, and this year there's no pro version, there's just the OnePlus 11 and the OnePlus 11R that have been released. So we've just got one phone with the best features in it. This phone in this configuration I've got costs $1,250 Australian and has mostly all the flagship features you would expect to see. It does have some minor drawbacks, but let's take a deep dive into this phone and see if it's worth the money. Before I do that, I have to give a massive thank you to OnePlus for sending me out another phone to review on this channel. I always really do appreciate it, and I hope I can provide a very in-depth and honest review about this phone. If you are interested in this item, there is a link down in the description below. It is not an affiliate link, so I'll not earn anything if you go there and purchase it. It's just down there for your convenience. I'm also not being paid by OnePlus for this review. They've sent this out to me just to give my honest review and opinions on, and that is what I'm here to do. Also, another note, there are timestamps included in the description as well as the pinned comment so you can skip to wherever you need to be. For example, the specifications or the camera test. It's all there for you as I imagine this video is going to go for quite a while so if you need to use them please feel free. I'll also say that this is going to be slightly different from my other reviews. I'll still go as in depth as I can with reviewing this device but since this is a flagship the most basic features I don't really need to cover in such detail since from the 10T to this there isn't too much that's being changed software wise but it should be fine. Let's just get into the pricing and specifications of the OnePlus 11. As of the 5th of February 2023 the OnePlus 11 in 16 gig RAM and 256 gigs of storage sits at around $1,250 Australian, which I'll display the usual currency conversion chart on screen for this. Give or take, this isn't quite accurate, but it just gives you a rough idea. The price may have increased or decreased ever so slightly from this time in filming, so just take it how it is. There are other RAM and storage configs available, such as the 8 gig plus 128 gig version, a 12 gig RAM plus 256 gig version, and 16 gig RAM plus 512 gigs of storage. As mentioned, I have the 16 gig RAM plus 256 gig storage version for this review. But also just to clear up, there is no differences between versions, it's just RAM and the storage that are bumped up. The 128 gig version does use slightly slower flash memory, but apart from that, the only real difference is making sure you go with the global version, as the Chinese version just has some Chinese apps on it by default. Alright, now let's jump into the full specifications for the OnePlus 11 and see what's under the hood of this new flagship. Comes in two colorways, Eternal Green and Titan Black. I have the Eternal Green colorway. The front of the phone is glass and protected by Gorilla Glass Victus. The back is also glass and protected by Gorilla Glass 5. We also have an aluminium frame, and I'm pretty sure the structural integrity has been vastly improved from last year's iterations. This does have an IP64 rating, which is nice to see. It is not the IP68 rating that was on the OnePlus 9 Pro I looked at, but at least it's something. The dimensions of the device are shown on screen, and the weight of this is 205 grams, so about the right weight for a premium device. The system on chip is the latest Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Gen 2, based on a 4 nanometer manufacturing process. This is, of course, an octa-core processor with an Adreno 740 GPU. It also uses an X75G chipset. The RAM configuration that I touched on earlier is either 8 gigabytes, 12 gigabytes, or 16 gigabytes at the max. The RAM is also LPDDR5X. Storage is 128 gig, 256 gig, and 512 gigabytes. And unfortunately, there is no micro SD card slot on this device, which has been carried over from most iterations of the OnePlus flagship lineup, as well as still being a commonplace thing on most flagship devices nowadays, save for a few exceptions. I really do wish we still had the option for a micro SD card, as it is quite handy to have, but it is what it is. The display is a 6.7 inch, 20 by 9, 1440 by 3216 525 pixels per inch 120 hertz LTPO3 fluid AMOLED with 1 billion colors HDR10 plus Dolby Vision and has a max brightness of 1300 nits. That's a lot of information to take in. Basically in all that jargon this is a very nice looking display and it's very much like the OnePlus 9 Pro's display with the variable refresh rates and all that. The screens are basically identical to be honest. It also has a 1 hertz always on display which is pretty neat to have. We have a triple camera setup bringing back the Hasselblad branding so we'll have to see if that does make a difference in the camera test. But the cameras that we have are a 50 megapixel main camera with optical image stabilization. Then we have a 32 megapixel portrait tally lens is what OnePlus officially calls it. It is a telephoto lens with two times optical zoom and 10 times digital zoom, but the camera's actually more focused on doing portraits than anything else, which explains why there's no optical image stabilization on this camera. And lastly, we have the 48 megapixel ultra wide camera with a field of view of 115 degrees and only electronic image stabilization. Alongside a dual LED flash, this camera setup can film up to 8K at 24 FPS. As noted just before, the telephoto lens actually 
actually doesn't have OIS. It instead uses electronic image stabilization. So that's a bit of a drawback, but once again, it is what it is. The front camera is a 16 megapixel one and can film in 1080p at 30 FPS. Sad to say that it can't do 60 FPS. It should definitely be capable of doing so. The battery is a 5,000 milliamp hour dual battery design and is bundled with the 100 watt fast charger, not like the 150 watt on the 10T, but still pretty awesome to have. We don't get any wireless charging capabilities or reverse charging support, which is quite unfortunate. That would have been really helpful to have on this device. I will also be testing the charging capabilities later in this video. The OS is Oxygen OS, which is built on Android 13. Like previous OnePlus devices I've reviewed, this is using a reasonably stock experience, but OnePlus has added a few things here and there to make it their own, which I'll demonstrate very quickly in this review. Dual band Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, GPS with a couple of different positioning technologies, NFC, we don't have an FM radio. We also have a USB Type-C port. The 9 Pro had a Type-C USB 3.1 port, but this has USB 2.0. Not a big setback, but thought I'd mention it. Also got an accelerometer, gyro, proximity, a couple of other sensors. There's also an underscreen optical fingerprint sensor included. Dual stereo loudspeakers are built into the OnePlus 11, which of course they will be blasting BFG Division on. They are Dolby Atmos certified like only 10 Pro and 10T. No headphone jack either, but that's to be expected by now. One feature that is back that I'm excited to see again is the audio slider. So you can switch it down to vibrate, mute, or back to normal. This was missing on the 10T, so glad to see you back, buddy. Now we come down to the networks. This should support most major networks around the world, and I'll display the band list on screen. So we've got support for GSM networks, CDMA, HSPA, EVDO, LTE, and 5G networks. Now, as always, please make sure you check with your network providers to make sure your country supports these bands. With a phone at this price, you want to make sure you can actually pick up reception wherever you live. And since this has no micro SD card slot, the SIM tray has the option to have two nano SIM cards in dual SIM configuration, both running at 5G as far as I can tell, and we also have eSIM support as well. Finally, in the box, the charger that comes with my device is the European one, and you won't get a travel adapter sent out within the box. No Australian plug either, but I actually got something that's quite useful, and I'll show you that during the charging test. Also in the box, we should have a USB data cable, SIM eject tool, warranty card, bonus stickers, and a protective case. However, I can tell you that I didn't get a case in the box, but maybe because mine's a sample unit, but I can't be too sure. Now that is all of the specifications of the OnePlus 11, so let me just breeze over some of the other features shown in the advertising. Real quickly, we won't be here for too long, but if you want to skip this, feel free to use the timestamps. So basically we have this summary of 10 reasons to choose OnePlus 11, the second generation Snapdragon 8 mobile platform, the full blood version 16 gig large memory, fair enough, the Hasselblad mobile phone imaging system, 2K 120Hz display, self-developed game cloud, computing private network, game frame rate and image quality super native, a bionic vibration motor, the 5000 milliamp hour large battery with 100 watt fast charging, the black hole inspired aesthetic design, which is elegant, deep, full of power and beauty, and the double loop magnetic speaker. But touching on that game frame rate and image equality stuff, basically it's summed up in this picture, which says the professional rendering chip is strong blessing. The Super Frame and Super Picture Engine leads the new era of mobile game experience, which allows you to enjoy a visual feast. The resolution is super, 100 plus mainstream games play at 120 FPS, and HDR game image quality. This picture is on the official listing from OnePlus themselves on AliExpress. So it kind of feels a little silly reading this. It's like I'm reading a welcome listing, but I'm not, it's flagship stuff. More about the display being 120Hz with Dolby Vision, the 1Hz always on display, follow up frame change, the frame rate can change with the swap of your finger, not the that I've actually noticed that during my testing, but anyways, AI brightness adaptive adjustment, multi-brightness color calibration, and ultra clear image quality enhanced. In this review, I will be tearing the phone apart because I want to see the aerospace grade diamond cooling has strong heat dissipation, and it is fun to turn on the black, whatever that means, but okay, sure, OnePlus. But yeah, we've got a big vapor chamber and other little heat sinks and stuff. So it'll be interesting to see if they are actually included when I tear this down. As of recording, I was hoping that Jerry Rig everything would do a durability test and tear down of this so that I wouldn't have to take my unit apart, but he hasn't as of yet. So I'll take the step to do that. And we've got the bionic vibration sense Marshu gives life to the vibration. As I said, these are off the official OnePlus listing on AliExpress, but it's got the addition of 11 motors. It can be said that the touch is strong in all directions and the smoke is clear. The cooler you type, the more notifications you haven't studied. Just agree with it. But I will say at this point, the haptics in this phone are really nice. The dual loop magnetic speakers are super nice and super resistant to hearing. Look, I'm not a sound person, but I'm not even sure what dual loop magnetic speakers are referring to. To me, a speaker is a speaker, not only fast charging, four years of use, but also durable. So OnePlus is giving you about four years lifespan with the OnePlus 11, which is absolutely quite generous. And this also claims to charge to 100% in 25 minutes. 25 minutes to 100%, I can absolutely guarantee that is correct. As I've already done 
done the charging test, so that's all good. Long-term charging protection, charging speed up, and extreme cold mode for charging. And finally for system, it does say we have Color OS, but that's for the Chinese version. I have Oxygen OS, but we do have a bunch of certifications for privacy protection. Not that that means too much to me, but it is there if you want to see it. Okay, that's all the listing, all the advertising, everything. So now the big question, can this almost 1,250 Australian dollar phone with the latest and greatest Snapdragon processor be a powerhouse as well as being kind to the battery life? Let's unbox it and take a detailed look. Taking only eight days from China to Australia, I have a DHL parcel. DHL tried to deliver it to where it was supposed to be delivered to, but they claimed they couldn't find where it was meant to be delivered to, and then instead took it to another place where I had to pick it up from. So that's one of the first little issues that I've had with DHL. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the OnePlus 11. Alrighty. And taking the red box out of the really tight bubble wrap, bag. There we go. We now have the OnePlus 11 box, which the 11s look pretty sweet there. It's one and one, one plus one, one plus plus Hasselblad. So they're back with the whole Hasselblad stuff, which was mostly a marketing gimmick, but I hope this time it's a lot more noticeable than previous times. Around the box, we have OnePlus 11 5G with the seals, which I'll have to crack through. And on the back, all the information, it is the 16 gig RAM plus 256 gig eternal green color, model being CPH 2449, Qualcomm Snapdragon, and the manufacturing date was the 23rd of the 12th, 2022. Let's slice through these to get our first look at the OnePlus 11. Oh, okay. So we get the little insert, which does this come with a case? Because the OnePlus 9 Pro came with a case. I hope this one comes with a case too. No, it doesn't. That's a bit sad. We get some quick start guides, safety information. I believe we've got the OnePlus stickers. Yes, we do. Oh, there's some new ones. They've got some new additions to the ever-growing OnePlus sticker collection that I do have quite a lot of. Wish they would have included a case. You know, for a phone at this price range, you'd hope that there would be a case included with it. I believe you get a screen protector. We'll check that in a second. Grab the phone out. Very hefty as well a big circular cut out there inside of the accessories we get the 100 watt charging brick there which i'll do a charging test on just to let you all know but the oneplus 10t was 150 watts this is only 100 watts but still 100 watts is much better than most of the other phones on the market type a that it uses not usb-c to usb-c and of course we get the usb cable that's type A to type C to use for charging as well as data transfer. I didn't find a SIM tray tool. It probably is in here somewhere. I've just missed it. All right, let's unravel the OnePlus 11 out of its packaging. Wow. It basically looks like the OnePlus 9 Pro from the front, pretty much the same detailing as the OnePlus 9 Pro, except the back has been changed. There is our stovetop camera set up there. Now, taking a better look at the camera bump actually does protrude out quite a bit. And since we don't have an included case, if you do put it down, you'll notice that it does rock quite considerably. So best to find a case if you do buy one of these. 50 megapixel main camera, which should be that I would say, the 32 megapixel telephoto, and the 48 megapixel ultra wide one just there with the dual LED flash, the emerald green. I do like this. The OnePlus branding is just underneath the glass as well as all the text. Would be cool to make a transparent version of this actually. That actually might be an idea. I'll think about it. Glass back, metal sides. We do have the mute switch finally. That was not present on the 10T. Now it is back. Power button. Got some antenna bands at the bottom, USB type C port as well as the SIM tray speaker grill as well and on the other side we have the volume rocker and more antenna bands Joe rig everything will do a test on this to see if oneplus has improved the structural integrity of this unit this time around or if it's still the same as last year's 10 and 10t otherwise uh, we have a little area for the top speaker to push sound through as well as a secondary microphone there's probably another microphone built into there somewhere along the lines and at the top we have our 16 megapixel front facing camera a screen protector already applied the screen is also slightly curved, which is nice. A small little slit for the earpiece at the top. And we do also have minimal bezels, which is very nice to see. Popping out the SIM tray, there is a red rubber ring around it to prevent water and dust from getting inside of the phone. And since this has an IP64 rating, it all makes sense that it's there. Okay, with the Telstra SIM installed, let's go ahead and power up this flagship OnePlus device. See how it stacks up against the OnePlus 9 Pro as well as the 10T that I've looked at. Thought it was dead then for a second. That's all good. 
And there we go, we've booted up. So we now have some squares in the background for all the different languages, which is quite new because this is Android 13. So things have been changed up, but getting a look at the screen real estate, very minimal bezels, liking that a lot. Let's go ahead and see if we got 5G. We certainly do pretty strong signal here. So that's great to see. I'll just go ahead and set this up just as per normal. The keyboard there, which looks slightly customized for OnePlus. The refresh rate is also 120 Hertz. Not that you can see that on camera, but I can tell you that's nice and smooth. Display quality is also fantastic like it was on the 9 Pro. And there we go. We are finally in. We have jumped forward in time quite a lot because I've had so much time to test this phone out, play around with it and all that sort of stuff. And usually I'd go through every single thing on this device, you know, show everything in settings, all the applications and all that sort of stuff. But I really don't need to. And that's because from the 10T to this, there is not much that's been changed software wise. And since this isn't a welcome device, this is a flagship device. You, the viewer, should know that at this price range, everything included should be top tier. So I'm only going to be going over the most important things of this phone, but straight away, I can say that the performance of this thing is absolutely amazing. Battery life is also great. The display is absolutely amazing. Like I can't even describe how crystal clear and smooth it looks. And the curves also are quite minimal. They're not too extreme, but it just gives a nice little touch to the phone. I've already enrolled my fingerprint as well. So that works perfectly fine. I've enrolled just only this little small area, no problems at all, even with the screen protector on. And face unlock also works super fast as well. Just do that again, there you go. And I had no troubles with enrolling that. Now, once again, going back to this amazing display, even though you can't tell, the 120 Hertz refresh rate is right there. It's very, very nice and smooth. And the one Hertz display looks a little something like this. While it is pretty difficult to see, with the naked eye, it's actually slightly flashing because it's only one Hertz. So I just thought that it'd be very interesting to show up close. Also, mute switch. So there we go. Silent mode, vibrate, and ring. So it's good to have that back and it's got little grooves on it to help you find its location. So if you just reach into your pocket, flick the switch, done. Very nifty to have on an Android device, I must say. I wish more Android devices did have this. Swapping down, we have all the usual shortcuts, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, all that sort of stuff. I'll just show you the torch real quick, which is fairly bright. And while night mode pretty much takes over for the most part, using the LED flash at night does help brighten things up a bit. Also, if you're noticing this little s'mores logo up the top there, this was made by a good friend, as I call him Jaro, but it's actually Yaro. But he 3D printed these. Show you that up close there with the LED. Looking pretty nice. I should make these official actually, because they're really, really cool. Cool key rings. I've just put NFC on to see the location of it. Should be about here somewhere. There we go. So it should be right about there. And the default applications installed on the phone are all here. Plus I've already put some on myself like Geekbench, Genshin Impact, Arc Survival Evolves. I'll have to put a couple of others on as well. But otherwise all the standard usual applications here. And as I said, I don't need to go through every single one to show you what they do. But I will quickly jump into settings just to show you any new features that may have been included on the 11 from the 10T. So the network and connections are basically all the same except with mobile network now you have the option to enable an eSIM. So you can have one physical SIM card and one eSIM or two physical SIM cards and no eSIM. Would've been cool if you could've had three SIM cards, but who needs three SIM cards? While I'm also here in mobile networks, I'm gonna splice in the core quality test that I've done with the OnePlus 11. And as you can all expect, this is gonna sound super clear. All right, this is the core quality test for the OnePlus 11. And as you should all expect, it sounds perfectly clear. Really, really good. Earpiece quality is super loud and it's super clear and I absolutely have no complaints with this. And the microphone quality on the OnePlus 11 is even better. It's exceptionally good. It sounds crystal clear. I've already done the camera test and I've already tested out the microphones and stuff and absolutely fine. Since this is a flagship, of course, it's gonna sound absolutely top tier, but I just thought I'd include this test just in case. And there you go, that's the quality of it. VOLTE definitely kicked in while using that, so not a problem with that one. Let's keep moving on. In wallpapers and style, we have all the default wallpapers, so we can change that to whatever we want. I might change it to, if we got something that's red, do we have anything that's red? No, but we have an orange looking sort of one. That looks so nice. The display is just one of the most standout features about this phone. To the naked eye is just super crisp, and I have absolutely no complaints about it whatsoever. You're always on display, you can customize, to have different patterns, canvas, text, and all that sort of stuff. Believe this was on the 10T, but stuff that you can definitely play around with if you wanted to. This also does have edge lighting and you can have it in red, which I think is really sick. Also fingerprint animation stuff is here as well. Not that it's very important, but I just find it quite cool that you can change that. In true smalls fashion, I'm gonna change the color scheme 
to red. Also, because this is one plus device, let's just have it set to red and now everything looks 10 times better. There we go. Now it's my type of phone. In display, you can have light mode and dark mode, all the usual stuff within here. The screen resolution I've had to mostly full HD plus the whole time, but just bumping it up to quad HD. You still have the 120 Hertz refresh rate. Honestly, I can't tell the difference between 1080p and Quad HD. It all looks the same to me, but there is likely some differences if you look real close. But honestly, I'd just leave it on 1080p. It looks great as it is. Coming into the battery though, we've got 97% left and it says it can last about a day, 21 hours and 28 minutes, which is quite accurate. I'll just display a screenshot right here of my standby test. So I left it for three days, seven hours and 47 minutes, and it dropped from 100% down to 34% which still could last another 10 hours or so. So I can definitely say that the battery life is excellent on this and using it for a couple of days, the battery life held up exceptionally well. You can definitely get a solid day's use out of this with heavy usage. If you're gonna be pushing it to the absolute maximum, like if you're just doing gaming on this, you're probably not gonna get a full day, obviously, of gaming, but for someone that's using a flagship phone for the most part, opening up social media, taking photos, all that sort of stuff, it will last a day 100%. And in terms of the charging speed for this, I'll splice in the footage for me charging this thing up when it was completely dead, all the way up to 100%, and we'll come back and continue on. I've got myself this power brick that supports a whole bunch of different countries which is actually quite useful instead of having to use travel adapters so this can just go right into there that's completely dead nothing's going to come up on that now the advertising for the oneplus 11 says one percent to 100 percent in 25 minutes so this is completely dead so i would estimate probably about 27 to 28 minutes this will take to power on let's start the test in three two one plug that in let's go so there we go getting juice already, which is good. Just move these a little closer. And just to make sure that's all coming from there. It's a bit strange that the 10T use Type-C to Type-C, whereas the 11 uses USB Type-A to Type-C to charge it. I just thought they would have used the same sort of charger, but that's 150 watts, this is 100 watts, so I guess some changes have been made. Okay, so it took three minutes to get to 1% then, so that's not too bad. I just changed the display to just be on for 30 minutes so you can actually see the battery percentage fill up. So nine minutes and 20 seconds in, we're at 30%, which is pretty good. We have a friend joining us today. Ripley has to watch as uh, this charges up. So don't mind her just sniffing around casually, just looking at everything, wondering what the hell's going on. Almost 16 minutes in and we're pretty much almost at 60%. So yeah, this is pretty good. I reckon we'll probably get past 25. See how we go. 18 minutes in, we've just hit 70%. What the hell? Is this hot? Oh yeah, that's fairly hot. That's pretty warm. <laughs> 20 minutes in at 80%, not bad. 23 minutes in at 90%, we're almost there. There we go. 27 minutes and 20 seconds to get from 0% to 100%. So OnePlus was absolutely correct with the advertised charging speed. It did take 25 minutes from 1% to 100% with an extra two minutes or so to get from zero to 100%. So that's absolutely great to see. However, the phone is pretty warm at this point in time. It's quite hot and the power brick itself is very, very warm. So that 100 watts is uh, working its magic there. So the OnePlus 11 passes the charging test. And as you just seen then, the advertising is correct. If it was at 1% to 100%, it'd take 25 minutes. But since it was completely dead, it did take a little bit extra to jumpstart it. But yeah, the phone does get quite hot during charging, not to the point where you can't touch it, but it's 
quite warm, and the charging brick itself is obviously quite warm as well because of the 100 watt fast charging that's going on there. One other little feature that I actually don't see a lot on Android devices is battery health. And as you can see, 100% capacity. So over time, this will degrade and you'll be able to see your battery health. Instead of using a third party app to monitor it, you've got this built in. As I said, I really wish this was on more Android devices. It's very basic on most of the ones that I've checked. Unless it has been included in newer Android devices, I'm just not too sure of it. Within sounds and notification as well, we have all the usual stuff that we can change. You can come to Dolby Atmos to change the scenario. I'll probably just leave it as smart for the speaker test just to see how that goes. Haptics and tones is something that was talked about in the advertising. They've even got a little video. And pretty much what it's doing is it feels like a Taptic engine that's in this. Like, what's going on on the screen actually feels like it's happening. Like, it's vibrating sort of constantly. Like, each time the balloons got shot then it vibrated and it just feels really, really, really nice. Like, comparing this to an iPhone's Taptic engine is kind of where I'd be at with this, but it does some really nifty things and it still feels like there's two vibration motors in this, but it could be just one, I don't know. A lot of things that happen with the UI on this phone use the haptics, and I quite like that. And I'm one that turns the haptics all the way up to 10 as well. You've got some special features like split screen, flexible windows, quick launch, smart sidebar, kid space, simple mode, and work-life balance if you wanted to change any of these to give you a better user experience. The system navigation, of course, you can have gestures if you want to. It wants to teach me, but I'll just leave that because I can't use gestures and I probably should be paying attention to it. But I'm very used to iPhone gestures. That's the only gesture gestures I'll use, but this actually is quite nice. Usually Android gestures are really janky to me, in my opinion, but this actually works kind of exactly how iOS does. So I'd probably be able to get used to that. However, I'm very old school. I prefer buttons. It's just much easier for me. In accessibility, you've got plenty of options, talkbacks there, hearing, live captions, all that sort of stuff, interactions. So everything here, if you need any accessibility stuff. And pretty much what we're left with is just about device. Oxygen OS 13, and I have the absolute latest update installed on this. So while testing this and doing Doing everything I did, I was on the latest version, but I'll double check to see if there's any other updates. I don't think there would be, because I only done it about a week ago. The model, Snapdragon, battery, screen size, RAM. You can do the RAM expansion stuff. You can actually expand it by 12 gig, but since this does have 16 gigs of RAM, you can then have an additional 12 gigs of virtual RAM and have 28 gigs of RAM, which is just completely insane for an Android device. But sure thing, you can do that if you wanted to. I might just leave that on just for the sake of it. Cameras are all listed there, Android version 13. Actually, the Easter egg. Oh, okay. There we go. That's the Easter egg. And now you can change this to all sorts of funky stuff. I wish they'd include mini games like on Marshmallow and Lollipop. And the security patch level is 5th of January, 2023. And just checking my SIM status, I definitely still have 5G, so all good there. And that's basically all I wanted to touch on within settings. So now that I've pretty much touched on how this phone performs, the display quality, most of the settings, networks, and all that sort of stuff, I think it's time that we jumped into one of the main features of this device, and that is the camera and we have quite a lot to cover with the camera. As pointed out by a good friend of mine, the interface does look like it's been kind of borrowed from Samsung, but we'll just leave that as is. There is just so many things that can be done within the camera mode. You have night mode, video modes with 720p, 1080p, 4K and 8K. I'm not gonna show 8K video within the camera test because the video is only gonna be displaying 4K 60fps stuff anyway. So I figured it's not really worth showing it because I'm not even particularly sure who uses 8K video recording on devices anyways. Um, and of course you can do 4K 30fps and 60fps, 1080p 30fps and 60fps and 720p. 20p, 30fps and 60fps. Now you can't film 4k 60fps with the ultra wide camera. You can film 4k 30fps with the ultra wide camera though. The telephoto will do 4k at 60fps at two times only. Photo wise, of course you have ultra wide, standard, the high res mode, you can switch that off. HDR, you can have auto HDR, which I've left on. There is also an auto macro mode, which uses the ultra wide camera as a macro camera. So if you go up close to an object, it clicks in and goes, oh yeah, we need to go super up close to this. Once again, that I've said in previous reviews, 
views, you can achieve macro effects basically with the main camera. Portrait mode can be done as well, and I did some tests with this, so that's all good. In more settings, you have a pro mode, panorama, movie mode, slow mode, time lapse, long exposure, dual view video, tilt shift, and X pan, which I actually don't know how X pan works. I tried stuffing around with it, but I couldn't get it to function, but I'm probably doing something wrong. But I tried a couple of these modes. I've done slow mo, panorama, dual view video. I didn't do movie mode though, because I wanted to leave it at the automatic settings during the camera test. Because I'm not very pro with exposure stuff, shutter speed and all that sort of stuff, I decided against using the movie mode, but I'm sure that someone who's into all this stuff can mess around with this and take some pretty good video using this mode. We also have ultra steady mode, which actually uses the ultra wide camera to do ultra steady mode because if you switch it off, it goes back to the main camera. So ultra steady off, and then if I put ultra steady on, you can see how it moves. But ultra steady pro is only 1080p 60 FPS. Coming into settings, we have all the usual stuff within settings. You can choose 10-bit color, but you do have the option to change it to the high efficiency image, as well as high efficiency video if you wanted to. Once again, I left most of the settings at default, but it's just good to know that you have the options to change stuff if you wanted to. With night mode as well, if you go outside at nighttime and snap a photo, it will actually automatically switch to night mode you can't actually switch that off it will just always take a picture with night mode on you cannot just take a normal dark photo for example if i used photo mode and go right up close to the mouse mat and take a photo keep your device steady and there you go and it tries to brighten it up so that's an auto night mode which look i can't complain about that but it would be nice to have that option off if you want it to just take normal photos without night mode having to kick in, but it's there if you need it. Quickly switching to the front camera, once again, all the usual settings, and you can do night mode on the front camera, which does work. Uh, video wise is only, yeah, 1080p at 30 FPS or 720p at 30 FPS, which is a bit sad. Normal photos, portrait mode, and you can do a couple of modes on the front camera, but it is very limited. But for me to show you every single little piece of the camera would take so long. So what I'll do is splice in the massive camera test that I've done with this device. So make sure to take in everything that you're about to see, all the different video modes and stuff, and you can decide for yourself if the cameras in this are good or not, or if they are a bit lacking. So anyways, let's cut to the camera test and we'll continue on.
Just a quick test with 1080p at 30fps and it's choppy and I've tried 4k 30fps and it's pretty much exactly the same, looks very choppy. Honestly I can't tell the difference between 1080p 30fps and 4k 30fps, it looks exactly the same to me. So honestly go with the 60fps if you're gonna get this phone, just film in 60fps. <laughs> it's much better than what this is looking like, go with 60fps, you've got all the modes available in there as well so I can still go ultra wide and two times if I want to, but yeah, I'm sticking with 60 FPS. That'll do me. Oh, you can do like cinematic shots with this. Okay. So this is 1080p with portrait on. So you can get some real cinematic shots in if you wanted to. I mean, it's 1080p, but still. All right, so here is 1080p 60fps, and you can do both ultra-wide and telephoto in this mode. So this is probably the most optimal mode for any video recording you're gonna do with the OnePlus 11, and that looks pretty nice. 4K 60fps obviously looks way better, but at least now I can go straight to ultra-wide, and then I can go straight in for telephoto zoom if I wanted to and then go back out. So I can do macro with this mode using the ultra wide camera and go straight back to one times and continue on. My shadow is kind of blocking a lot of things but you can definitely see the colors. OnePlus 9 Pro looks pretty good but this looks a lot better, way better. Super stabilized as well in this mode, not ultra steady but I don't know, I'm pretty sure OIS is working. It has OIS so it has to be doing something. There you go. See, look, even the main lens, I can go straight up to an object and it looks exactly the same as using the ultra wide as a macro. Up to you. Also, I'm seeing a little bug. There's a little bug. Where is he? There he is. Whoop. There he is. Can you see him? He's running away. Don't run away, fella. Lemons, lemons, lemons. There you go. Quick autofocus there. Looking good. And so then if we go to the far away icon, see, kicks into ultra wide and then we go forward two, two times, then we go 10 times. There we go. Oh, there's the breeze air icon. And then I go straight back all the way. It's ultra wide. There's a bit of a lag when switching two cameras, but hey, that's fine. This is Ultra Steady Pro, which is 1080p 60 FPS. And yep, that's pretty stable. That looks pretty good. So if you're trying to shoot a movie and trying to be really cinematic and stuff like that, oh yeah, you can do it. Woof. Oh, there you go. Looking nice. Looking good. Just walking about. Try just moving the camera in all sorts of directions. If you're prone to motion sickness, this may trigger it a little bit, but uh, there you go. Super smooth. Super nice. So you can film 4K 30 FPS with the ultra wide camera. That's what that's looking like. Once again, a little bit choppy, but that's not too bad though. 
and it also works as a macro camera so let's test that it certainly does I mean you could probably achieve the same effect with the uh, main camera but still there you go let's go to these little things oh nice so you can't film ultra wide with 4k 60 fps only 4k 30 fps is what you can do with the ultra wide and you could do 1080p 60 fps of course which is what i'm on now and it looks pretty good and if i go up like so you can definitely see the ultra wide is kicking in and then i can trigger it back to normal and then back to ultra wide again so that's normal and then ultra wide so you can switch modes as i've already said but um yeah just dedicated sort of look with the ultra wide camera as it is So I can tell that EIS is definitely working because it seems a little bit blurry sort of thing. But yeah, that's looking pretty good. Hey look, many lemons. Lots of lemons. Oh, it's having a little bit of trouble trying to autofocus on that. Let me try manual focus on that instead. If you switch it to macro, it does work. There you go. That's a lot better so okay the macro mode on this isn't totally useless but still far away aircon oh you can't even see it there it is there so yeah just thought i'd do a dedicated ultra wide test for you this is 4k 30 fps just standard and it's very choppy from what i can see anyways but you know it looks very very nice if i just sort of hold it still it looks really nice but just sort of panning along there you're better off just going with 4K 60 FPS, to be fairly honest. Still looks alright though. Okay, here we are testing 4K 60 FPS on the OnePlus 11. And I'm led to believe that there's some sort of optical image stabilization on, unless this is really good EIS, but hey, that's looking really nice, 4K 60 FPS. I was going to do 8K, but considering that I'm not going to be able to even show it in the video properly, I figured I wouldn't do it, so... You're just gonna have to deal with 4K 60 FPS, but look at that. That's pretty good. Three Muppets. Oh, it's a bit bright for you fellas. There you go, that's a bit better. And the bolts on the wall looking like that. These fellas looking a little something like that. That's pretty good. And Cat or the Cat looking like a cat. Actually, not like a cat kind of looks like a fox. Lemons, 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 lemons. Lots of lemons. There's a lemon there. Hello, lemon. How you doing? There you go. Look at the quality, man. And the faraway aircon. Let's have a look at you. There you go. And I just go for a zoom. Look at the zoom. Oh, oh, look at that. There you go. That's 4K 60 FPS. Looking good. Ripley's hiding. Hi. Also, look what I got. I got a piano mat, so when she walks across it, it makes noises, but she knows that, so she doesn't walk across it. <laughs> oh, poor Rippy. <laughs> you know, Flop? There you go. There you Flop. Yes, there's your toes. That's your cute toes. Yes, you're a chonk, I know. But you're adorable. And that's why we all love you, because you're adorable. Look, you're adorable. Look at you adorable. Oh, hello. I just go back out. There you go. She likes the water coming out of the tap, so if we just put it on ever so slightly. You know, it just, it just drips all over it, but she's like, oh, this is fine. Yeah, I don't care. She's just fascinated that the water drops, and it's just like, wow. This is amazing. Isn't it a rip? There you go. I just like how she just <laughs> she just watches it. Like, huh, huh, this is interesting. Most cats hate water, but no, she's just like, oh, this is one. <laughs> isn't it a rip? No, oh, no, that's a little too fast for you, isn't it? That's a little too fast.
All right, we're testing the video quality of the OnePlus 11 at night time with the LED flash on, and this is what it looks like. 4K 60fps as well. That looks good. It's refreshing to see something so nice, but at this price, you better hope that it does something good, and it certainly does. Everything looks very, very nice and vibrant, so if you're out camping or in the middle of nowhere with your OnePlus 11, you'll certainly be able to record the pure darkness, and it illuminates quite far as well. Not that it really appears, but it definitely does work. Stabilization is still working as well, as you can see there. And if I come up to the lemon, look at that. That looks very, very nice. And the faraway aircon as well, and the night sky, look at that. Oh, what? Oh, it's having trouble. Oh, there we go. It couldn't focus on the aircon, but um, there you go. Can I actually see the faraway aircon? I don't think so. Yeah, that LED is not going to help see that. <laughs> we tried. But I don't really need to test this in 1080p or anything like that. I'm testing it at 4K 60fps, and from this quality, I can say it'll be fine for anything. 8K, obviously, is uh, a different story. Here we are testing the quality of the front camera on the OnePlus 11, and I've got EIS on, and that works. I'm moving that. It, it looks like I'm moving. I'm moving now, but... Yeah, that works really, really well, actually. No autofocus or anything like that, it's just fixed. But hey, it looks pretty clear, as it should on a flagship that costs this much. It should look very, very nice, and that it certainly does. And I can zoom in as well, I think. Can I zoom in? Have I zoomed in? You can't actually zoom in during videos, which is a bit strange. You can stuff around with the exposure, but yeah, you can't actually zoom in with the front camera. Also, the photos look really good. You can imitate a 30 millimeter lens with portrait mode. It looked pretty cool. Gotta admit, looked pretty cool. So. Let's keep on moving on with this. Super stable. This is without any stabilization on, by the way. Still doesn't look that bad at all. <laughs> it's fine. I mean, I shouldn't be saying not that bad. It's perfectly fine. It's more than fine. It's great. As it should be with a phone at this price, as I've said. Oh yeah, dual views on here as well, which is quite fun. I always like this mode. See? You can see everything, and oh, let's go lemons. Hey, oh, maybe it should be this way. Look at these lemons. That's a lemon. Okay, this is nighttime footage with the OnePlus 11 with the front camera. Uh, you can hear a helicopter because there's a helicopter searching around for somebody. It's not me, I didn't do anything. Um, the screen is illuminated, so then you can see what's going on. Um, it's not too bad. Big grainy, obviously, because there's no flash or anything, it's just a screen brightening up. But it'll do. It's definitely fine. And there's Ripley there, looking sad. Hi! But, um, yeah, there you go. That's what nighttime looks like. Okay, you've just seen the photos and videos that I took with the OnePlus 11. Now, to tell a long story short, the cameras are good. The telephoto camera, or the portrait tele lens, with it only doing two times and then 10 times digital zoom, it kinda does lack a little bit there, but definitely the main camera and ultra wide are solid. The selfie camera is also pretty solid for what it is. At nighttime with the selfie camera, things get a little bit lost, but it is what it is, it tries its best. Touching on the main camera though, here's a picture I took of Ripley. And while this isn't a 10 bit image, this still just shows how much detail this captured, and I'm pretty satisfied with that. And there is that little AI function that you can have on to automatically change the settings and stuff, but this was not a portrait photo. This was just a normal regular photo, but it still, you know, blurred the background and was able to do that effect. But dedicated portrait photos, on the other hand, look a little something like this. So that's definitely in the foreground, and then we've got the background, which is pretty blurred out. You can achieve portrait effects with the main camera. You can do a pretty good job of that. So I really do wish that telephoto lens had at least like a five times optical zoom instead of just two times. It does work, but I just wish the implementation wasn't mainly for portraits and then telephoto as a secondary option. That's a nighttime portrait with the selfie camera, and it does a pretty good job of blurring the background and all that sort of stuff. So no problems there. 
and then portrait mode with the front camera during the daytime works really well. The front camera honestly is pretty good and does do some pretty good effects. It's just video wise, it only does 1080p 30fps. That's my only gripe about the front camera. Getting back to the main cameras. So here is the far away aircon with ultra wide. And the ultra wide camera also doubles as a macro camera, but once again, you can use the main camera to go up close to an object and it will work just the same as macro. That's ultra wide, far away aircon. You do get a fair amount of detail in there. And I will say there is something to do with the colors and stuff because looking at the house and the trees and stuff like that in real life the colors are not as vibrant but looking at it on this display you can really see the colors pop and then looking back at the photos on my PC the colors are obviously not as vibrant as they are on here because of the display being as good as it is the Hasselblad stuff is definitely tuning something with the photos there's something going on with software to make things a little bit more brighter than they usually are but yeah that's standard just there and then that's two times so that's not a lot that you get with the telephoto lens. And if I just zoom in, it's like, it's clear. It will take decent photos. And then that's five times digital, which actually doesn't look that bad. It's quite reasonable. While the gripe is that we don't have a bigger optical zoom, the digital zoom actually does a fairly good job. And I'm pretty happy with that. And like OnePlus is doing all of this because their philosophy was people are taking more photos of people in groups and stuff. Thus, you don't need a big telephoto lens on this, which I guess does make sense in a way. But for me, I'd just rather just stick a five times telephoto lens on there and let software do the rest, to be fairly honest. And I can't do terribly much about it, but just explain how I'm feeling about this. This is just my honest opinions about this. There's a macro shot there of Maggie the Magpie, and you could pretty much get the same detail with the main camera. But anyway, moving on. This is night mode. I went outside at 10.50 p.m. and I took this photo and that's what it looks like. And I said, that's pretty damn good. And as I demonstrated earlier, you can't just take a photo in the dark and let it do its thing. It automatically does night mode for you. Um, that works for me. I literally went outside, took the photo and here it is. That's with the LED flash on. So you're better off just using night mode because that really does sharpen things up. And while things do get a little bit lost, the blacks are a little bit sort of lost here and there and stuff. I think it's pretty good. It's probably the best night mode that I've seen on an Android device. But then again, I don't use a lot of flagship Android devices. This is pretty much the most powerful phone that I'm taking a look at in my hands right now. Everything about this just screams, it's awesome. This is the best I've ever seen. But I'm still trying to do my best to point at some of the little nitpicky things here and there. But I can say night mode is excellent. Unless you come inside and as you can see, all my little collectibles and stuff, I mean, they're brighten up but they're sort of a bit lost in the quality. So you can edit the photo and do all sorts of different things to adjust, you know, the brightness and stuff like that. But just as a stock standard photo with the night mode, that's what it looks like inside. So outside shots are obviously gonna be a little bit better. So I'll just let this video of Ripley play while I now talk about the video quality of this. 4K 60 FPS looks excellent and I have no faults with that. 4K 30 FPS and 1080p 30 FPS are quite choppy. I mean, it is 30 FPS. 1080p 60 FPS is also pretty good and I have no issues with that. Night videos do get a little bit grainy and with the LED flash on, it does help ever so slightly. The ultra wide camera can't do 4K 60 FPS. It can only do 4K 30 FPS. I also did a test with 8K video and 8K has no zoom function or anything. It is just literally as is. The ultra steady pro mode only works in 1080p 60 FPS and not 4K. But I've got to look at this and go, it's pretty good. I mean, you can see all the detail with Ripley there. Sometimes it does get a little bit too sharp. Like there, for example, it's just a little bit too sharp. <laughs> To my liking, it's not very natural. It's a flagship device, and if I was to pay the money for this device, I would be pretty happy with the camera quality. So in my personal honest opinion, these cameras are definitely great for what they are. I know I rambled on way too long about the cameras, but I'm just trying to give my perspective of this device in a more consumer way. Instead of looking at this really professional and tell you all about the little things here and there and stuff, I just wanna give you a more honest consumer opinion. And for most people who do pick this up, you'll have no issues with default camera quality, but you always have the pro modes to stuff around with the exposure and shutter and all that sort of stuff to achieve better effects than what you're getting just with automatic settings. If you are into all that sort of stuff, you'll probably find you'll get a lot better pictures than what you have just with the default stuff. If that makes any sense, I hope it does. If you didn't stick around for that whole entire rambling bit, they're good. 
When I jump into a conclusion, I'll talk a little bit more about the cameras and stuff just to sort of sum it up. But as it is for me, just opening up the camera and taking photos, I'm pretty happy with it and satisfied with what it does. All right, so now that I've pretty much rambled about the camera for about half an hour, let's continue on. Because I think we should do the YouTube test as well as the speaker test. So of course I'm gonna be testing Costa Rica in 4K and bumping up to 4K with HDR. Let's see how it looks. 4K, 60 FPS HDR. This is probably gonna be the best viewing of this Costa Rica video on any phone I've ever tested on the channel. Here we go. Holy crap, the speakers are good. It's gone a little dark. Why has it gone a little dark? Hang on, that's better. There we go. Wow. Those speakers are punchy. Little bit of an imbalance, but that's okay. But look at Froggo. Look at him go. Aww. I have not watched this completely the whole way through on a 4K display with HDR on. And it looks amazing. And the phone is actually like vibrating from the sound. I thought my Fold 2 speakers were good. Yeah, okay, this, this kind of wins. <laughs> this takes the cake. I'm so used to cheapo devices that I just see anything that looks good and it's just amazing to me. So I am not the type of person that should be reviewing flagships. I love reviewing cheapo stuff because it's so much easier to figure out what's wrong with the device. When I get something that's so good in front of me, it's so hard to distinguish any flaws that are with something because everything just looks 10 times better than what it does on a standard generic device that I look at. So I'm trying my best. I also turned the animations down. It's made it ever so slightly snappier. Everything just opens super, super fast. I mean, with the 16 gigs of RAM, actually not 16 gigs of RAM, it's now 16 gigs of RAM plus 12 gigs of virtual RAM. So, you know, got to have the 28 gigs of RAM there. And like, if you can see right now how bright the display is, like if I turn this off, that's just ridiculous how bright that is. And that's not even the brightest. It goes even further. And like the camera can't even work out what is even going on with it because it's just so bright. Let's do YouTube music. I have BFG Division on here and it's the FLAC or FLAC file. We are just gonna play this and just let it happen. Just let it happen. Yep, that's... Yes, very. All right. How are you going? There is a tiny bit of imbalance between the top speaker and the bottom speaker. But holy moly, they're loud, they're clear, they pack a punch, and I love them. We're not done with the speaker test just yet, because I want to find something that's got vocals in it. And obviously, no copyright sounds, I can play this. There you go. I can actually feel air coming out of the bottom speaker. Those speakers definitely are better than my Fold 2 speakers. They are better than the 9 Pro speakers. They're better than the 10T speakers. And they're probably the best speakers I've ever tested on a phone ever. From 
a reputable manufacturer, not welcome devices with those stupidly big 40 millimeter drivers in them. I don't know what kind of speakers in there, but it's pumping out air. And because we've got that little tiny hole at the top, there's more of the sound popping through there as well. That's enough rambling about the speakers. I'm pretty happy with that as once again, as well as the screen quality. So let's continue on because we don't have too much left now. Basically we've got gaming, which is just arcs of all evolved in Genshin Impact, which I know will run perfectly fine, but it's just to sort of push the phone a little bit further and see how it goes. But I think what I wanna do is open up Geekbench 5 and let's just see what we get with the benchmarks because this should be a pretty high score, but I just wanna see from like the 10T and the 9 Pro to now what the difference is. So let's run the benchmark. We'll just leave it. We'll come back and see what score we get. We got 1,153 for the single core score and 4,775 for the multi-core score. OnePlus 9 Pro got 1,078 for single and 3433 for multi. And the 10T with the 8 Plus Gen 1 got 1,017 for the single core score and 3398 for the multi-core score. So the single core score is about the same, but the multi-core score is like 1,300 points more than the 10T. So the 8 Gen 2 is definitely a huge performance increase from the 8 Gen 1 and 8 Plus Gen 1, which I was really hoping for because between the 888 and the 8 Gen 1, there didn't seem like there was much that had been changed. But now with the 8 Gen 2, I can definitely see that the performance has definitely increased dramatically. These are just numbers at the end of the day. I can definitely reassure you that the 8 Gen 2 is not only much better for battery life, but much better for performance as well. I've just decided to run Geekbench 6 just to see if the scores are any different. And we do have 1,506 for the single core and 4,876 for the multi-core score. So from Geekbench 5, the single core score has bumped up quite considerably and the multi-core score has jumped up a little bit. But it's just that I've ran Geekbench 5 on the 10T as well as the 9 Pro to compare it to. I'll quickly do the gaming test and then I'll also just quickly double check the specs in device info hardware just to see if that comes up with anything different. Let's play Arc first, if it will actually work. Yes. No, I had the same issue with the 10T, I believe. Arc just doesn't open, which is very strange. Genshin Impact then, welcome, welcome. Let me just show you how Genshin Impact runs and see if the phone heats up a little bit. Like so far during the camera test and stuff like that, the phone didn't really heat up. It was when it was charging. That's when it got hot the most. So I haven't really felt it heat up that much just while using it for, you know, this review and testing and stuff like that. So let's just see how we go. Also, I've got the volume at maximum, so that might blow everyone's eardrums out. So I'll just put that down a little bit. Here we go. Genshin Impact. Not a problem. <laughs> Not a problem. Beautiful. Just to double check, all the graphics are on the absolute maximum. SATA can't do 120 FPS. It's only 60 FPS. From what you can see there, it's good. Like, you'll get a little bit of a frame drop here and there from, you know, the environment loading and stuff. This is the latest and greatest hardware in this device. It's perfect. I can definitely feel the phone warming up now. Right about here is pretty warm. Going further down, also about here is pretty warm as well. The back is not so hot. It's warm, but it's not blistering hot. It's actually more warmer on the screen side because of the whole vapor chamber stuff. And since that's behind the AMOLED display, that's taking up most of the heat. So that means it's all working correctly. The heat dissipation is going through and going out like that. I'm gonna just quickly put device info hardware on and see how fast that was. Just gonna go to thermal real quickly. The CPU is currently at about 46 degrees roughly. So just keep that in mind because now I'll go back to Genshin, just stuff around with this a little bit more and then go back to device info hardware and see what it's at. I can feel it starting to warm up a little bit more now. Like holy moly, it's super smooth. I wish you could see how smooth it was on camera, but uh, just trust me, it's, yeah, it's nice. Like what is the most graphically intensive game for Android, I wonder. Because I feel that Genshin Impact isn't really doing it justice. I feel that there's something out there that's ridiculous in terms of graphics that can only run on super high-end devices. I'd have to really look that up, but I assume it would be perfect on here. So now I'll go to device info hardware real quickly. And yeah, it's about 60 degrees there if you've just seen that. And now since I've exited Genshin Impact, it's just 
coming down. But since the cooling is doing its thing, then everything is there. But holy moly, there's a lot of sensors for the CPU and stuff and the GPU as well. It is going to get warm during gaming, obviously, but I don't think this is going to get to the point of overheating. But let's just quickly go through device info hardware, just to double check all these specifications and stuff, which is all correct 8 gen 2 with the four clusters there there's the screen there all correct the ram i wish it said 28 gig there but because it's 12 gig virtual memory can't do much it doesn't show all of the cameras within device info hardware but it does list the hardware there which all does match up with the specifications that were provided on oneplus's website battery 5000 milliamp hours yeah all good with that one 38 degrees with that as well now that i'm just back to just normal stuff the phone is just cooled down immediately it's a little tiny bit warm now. Definitely really effective what the cooling's doing. There is the games as well, which I have already shown on the OnePlus 9 Pro, but basically you just swipe down during gaming to access like little shortcuts and stuff. You'll only need to use that if you're a hardcore gamer. Clone phone is also here. If you want to migrate from another device to OnePlus, you can absolutely do that. Everything else is pretty much stock Google applications. Some OnePlus applications are installed. Um, Netflix is also on here by default if you want to use that, which honestly, Netflix would be pretty good on this. This is what I mean with this review. I don't need to open up every single thing on this. I can open up the browser, but we all know it's going to be fine. Since this is a flagship device, we all know how it's going to run, but like You know what I mean? <laughs> the phone is just super fast. The performance is great. The display is great. Cameras are pretty good for what they are. Battery life is amazing. The build of this is really good. Speakers are nice and loud. The haptics are great. With Android 13, it's the latest and greatest. Even though OnePlus has put their own touch on things, it's still fairly stock for the most part. But I guess with OnePlus doing their own little customization things, it's pretty good. Let me tear this apart. I don't really want to do this, but I'm going to do it because I just want to see the motherboard and the speakers and all that sort of stuff. I want to experience it for myself. I haven't looked it up in advance to see what the deal is inside of this. I want to have it as a bit of a surprise. I will go into a full-blown conclusion after the teardown. Very happy with this device. Also, the alert slider. Very happy with that as well. Let's not talk too much about conclusions because I want to tear this apart and all the fingerprints on the screen as well. This is the sacrifice I'm willing to make here, but it shouldn't be too hard getting in this device. I don't think so anyways. Don't mind me, but I'm going to be stupidly careful with this because I do not want to break this device at all. I'm voiding the warranty doing this. That's okay. Now I'm not entirely sure if this piece comes off with the glass or if it stays there, but let's see if I can get into the phone first. We're in. I did it. Oh, tell you what, that wasn't easy. Thank you to Troy Van here for those picks as well. That was actually really good to use them to actually slice around the edges and stuff, as well as using my hobby knife to actually get into the thing. But we're in. There was a considerable amount of adhesive on there. That actually comes off with it as well. I thought that may have been a part of the frame, but no, it's not. All right, so there's just this little black piece over the battery, which the 2500 milliamp hour cells each, and the dual battery design there to help with the 100 watts of fast charging that goes through this. But if I just pop the bottom plastic off, there's the loudspeaker there, which I would believe there is the tiny little foam balls in there to help make the sound a lot bigger than it is. There is some waterproof mesh over the speaker grill to stop any debris from getting in. Honestly, I thought the speaker would be a bit bigger than that. Well, there it is there. I would have to take it apart to get a better look at the sort of the technology of what it looked like in the advertising. Whatever it is, it's loud. So I'm happy with that. There's also the vibration motor just down the bottom there as well. I'm going to take the top plastic off so we can get a look at everything else. Also, I'm doing this tear down at 2 a.m. What am I even doing? All right, now with all the screws removed, I can unsnap the top plastic. Oh, there is a flex ribbon that I almost ripped off. Dodged a bullet with that one. But that there is the NFC. Very small, that NFC area, but it's just there. The flash and also a microphone is just there as well. So that's all on that little PCB and then that little flex ribbon 
next to the main board. But yeah, this graphite tape sort of goes on there. So that's the first sign of cooling just there. Now the cameras, that sensor is huge in this phone. It's hard to tell from the outside. I'll have to actually see how big that sensor actually is. We definitely have optical image stabilization there and that completely worked 100% during my tests. The two times telephoto lens, which does have some movement, but accordingly doesn't have any stabilization, only electronic image stabilization. And the ultra wide also has a little bit of movement too, but that definitely has EIS. There's no optical image stabilization there. Now we do have little warning guides that say pull up the battery. So I'll do exactly that. That's it, battery replacement done. How easy is that? One flex ribbon also connects the two. I thought it might've been two flex ribbons, but nope, that's both of the batteries there together. Cool how technology works. I believe I can see the huge vapor chamber. You can actually see it. I'm not gonna do a jerry rig everything and cut it open, but I can see it right there. Can I just point out that there's like an antenna ribbon, just, you know, just, just chilling playing snake with the OnePlus 11. <laughs> the most expensive snake you will ever be playing. Okay, with everything disconnected, I should be able to just pull up the motherboard. And there we go. We have a big goop of thermal paste just right there on top of the processor. We also got more graphite tape over there as well. Yeah, it's a dual stacked board. Actually, is there three layers? There's three layers. Look at this. This is crazy. Hey, I just met you. And this is crazy. This OnePlus board will never focus. There is three layers. Let me just count that properly. We have this layer, so number one. Then we have a second layer. Then we have a third layer. And then we have shielding. Three layers. Double stacked boards as far as I go, but a triple stacked board? Okie dokie. And all of the flex ribbon connectors also have rubber gaskets around them to help with any water that gets in. So like every single one of them has a gasket over it. There's probably likely some copper underneath the shielding as well to help with heat dissipation, but that's only just an assumption. Camera wise, what have we got? Here is our 16 megapixel selfie camera with no optical image stabilization, fairly simple. Next up is the telephoto lens, once again, with no optical image stabilization, but it does have some movement to the lens, but that's probably due to that two times optical zoom. Then we have the ultra wide camera just there. Not a lot of movement, as we said, that's definitely EIS with that one, but the big fella. Look at the sensor. It has little blue doodad things in there. That's kind of neat. But this camera itself, that's a nano SIM card next to the camera. So there's a pretty big sensor in there. And with the Hasselblad software stuff that's going on to make things ever so slightly nicer than what they are, that's, yeah, that's all good there. And the top earpiece is just there. And yeah, there's that little hole in the top. So then the sound will shoot out through there. Well, I can't see the cooling just there. It's obviously something behind this that's doing its magic there. I don't doubt the cooling in this because I can see all of that going on. No problems with that. I would take the bottom assembly out, but the thing is I'm not sure about this vibration motor. I don't trust myself to remove this because that flex ribbon, I'm trying to follow it and I don't follow it. But the optical fingerprint scanner would be just under there too. Just flipping over the SIM card slot is just there and the charging port is actually not part of it. It's on its own little flex ribbon. As much as I'd like to go further, I just don't trust myself with taking anything else out from the bottom there. I've got to look at everything that I wanted to have a look at and I'm satisfied with everything I've seen. So now I'm going to try and put this thing back together. The keyword is try. While I reassemble the OnePlus 11, let me jump into the conclusion, which I'm pretty sure most of you should know my main thoughts on this device. With the fluctuating prices from when I first filmed to now, the phone in the second tier config is about $1,210 Australian, with my variant being $1,320 Australian. And I have to say, I think it's worth it. While I mainly look at cheap devices and having something like this in front of me, it's hard not to say everything is absolutely perfect on this. And while this phone is definitely a great performer, it does have some minor little nitpicky things about it. Positives though, the build is solid, the display is amazing, battery life is excellent, performance is so much smoother than anything Android based I've used. Android 13 seems to be really optimized on this and the OnePlus editions honestly are quite fine with me. 5G reception and quality is perfect, the speakers and haptics are fantastic, 
and the main 50 megapixel camera and the ultra wide camera do perform pretty well for what they are. But I think my main criticism is the portrait tally lens and just overall some of the other bits and pieces from the camera setup. The Hasselblad software integration does work for the most part, but sometimes it's either too extreme or too little. If you use the pro modes, you could probably get a better result out of them. 30 FPS video is a little bit lacking and the selfie camera only doing 1080p 30 FPS is still a bit unfortunate. As OnePlus said with the telephoto portrait camera, it's not meant to be more telephoto, rather portrait for groups of people and stuff, which I can understand, but just put a good telephoto lens in it and let the software do its thing anyways. And you know, portraits can look impressive, but sometimes it does lose the mark just a little bit in some areas. Stabilization also within video does work fairly well, but you can tell the difference when EIS is being used as opposed to OIS, but that's only just a minor thing. I think with a further software update, the cameras can be ever so slightly tweaked to make them a bit better, but as they are, for me, in a consumer perspective about this, that will absolutely do the job, no problems at all, and I'm personally happy with the quality anyways. For the price, there's lots to love about this, and I feel that OnePlus has brought a lot more to the table this time around, which I'm very happy with. And I would say maybe the 9 Pro is still a good phone to go with, but this just improves upon that with the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2, which I would much rather have than the 888 or 8 Gen 1. Regardless, if you are after a flagship device with pretty impressive features, this would be one to consider, but if you just hold off a little longer, you might find it a bit cheaper, and if your current phone is working completely fine, then just keep it going for as long as you can before upgrading. There's no point just pointlessly upgrading just for the sake of it, unless you have a welcome device. In that case, please get rid of it and upgrade as soon as possible. Since disassembling this, just along the edges, the screen protector is actually lifting off. I mean, it's still stuck down, but it's just a little bit bubbled. That's probably due to me heating this thing up a little bit too much, and that's probably why it lifted off just along there. It's looking a bit bad, but that's okay. It'll still do for the most part. Honestly, I'd probably have to get another one reapplied and find a case for this if I wanted to use this properly. That's the complete review of the OnePlus 11. I know I didn't cover absolutely everything on this device because we'd be here forever, but I have tried my best to give you an honest and upfront opinion about this device. And from a consumer perspective as well, I think this is well worth the money. Since I don't do flagship reviews, there's only so much that I can say about this without making it sound perfect, if that makes sense. So I hope this review has been useful to some people, even if this video was quite messy and all over the place, but I've absolutely done Done my best here. The best phone I've looked at on the channel and probably the best phone I'll look at in a very, very long time. As I said, I'm just not really comfortable with flagships because there's just so much to cover. And while it's only incremental upgrades every single year, there are some good features on this. I just feel I've spent too much time talking about them. So let me thank OnePlus for sending this out to me for review. I really do appreciate it. And thank you to OnePlus for the understanding and all that sort of stuff during the production and making of this video review. So yeah, I really do appreciate all the kind support from them. They've sent me several phones in the past to review on the channel and have always been very kind about it. So show OnePlus some love, you know. If you've made it this far as well without using the timestamps, thank you very much for taking the time and effort to watch through this entire thing. But if you needed to use the timestamps to skip through this video, that's 100% completely understandable. If I'm rambling about the camera for 20 minutes solid, I don't expect everyone to sit there and listen and go, oh yeah, 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 I agree with that. I agree with that. So if you need to use the timestamps, that's, yeah, that's completely fine. I am finally finished with this review. It has taken me so long to piece this thing together and do all the research and everything. But as I said, I hope you have all thoroughly enjoyed this one for what it was. And, um, I thank each and every one of you for tuning in to listen to me ramble throughout this video and try and make a comprehensive review of this device. Just before I go, I'm going to be taking a break in March from March 4th to about March 24th or something like that. A little bit of a break just to do some personal things. Um, so in that time, I'll probably just be scouting out for other items to review. So when I come back in March, I'll continue on and be having a look at some other items and all that. But I might be able to put one more video out in the meantime, but We'll see how we go. I'm going to leave it here. Thank you very much for watching once again. I really do appreciate it. Thank you to OnePlus as well for sending me this out. Once again, I really appreciate it. As always, please take care, stay safe, and be good people. And I'll see you all in the next video, which I've got a few ideas, but we'll see if I can get them out before I take my break in March. If not, it'll be after March. I might be able to do a live stream before I take a break as well, and before my voice starts to die on me, because I've been talking nonstop for the last four days. Anyways, please take care, everyone, and I'll see you next time. Also, thank you, Yaro, Jaro, for this. I'm thinking of actually keeping this here now. Instead of having a little watermark down there, just have this at the top.
because I know some sneaky people have been stealing my videos and using them as advertisements. So if I have that right there while I'm looking at the product, I mean, they can still crop out the stuff, but like, I, I don't know. We'll see how we go. I'm going to shut up now. Take care of yourself and I'll see you next time. If you like this content, feel free to leave a like or a dislike. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you all in the next video.